Hey everybody, Joe here. And uh, well, there's really no way around it, I guess. I'm being medically retired. In my last video, I brought up that I was being med boarded. I think that was back in April and the determination was made that I was unfit for duty. So here we are. It all started in February. I got an email that I was assigned to Peblo, an evaluation board liaison officer. That's where uh, it all started. In March, I knocked out a litany of appointments. I went across the uh, river to St. Louis, and then there were some appointments that I had here. Much shorter drive. And these weren't your typical appointments. I went to Missouri for an audiogram and an eye exam, yes, but I had a lot of physicals and stuff done here. But it wasn't MEPS-style physicals, thankfully. Uh, it was a range of motion tests, reflexes. Uh, the weather was really dry and at the time the eczema on my hands was out of control it was real bad uh, so you can talk about that and pretty much anything and everything was on the table psychiatry uh, i spoke with a psychiatrist i don't know if that's par for the course or because i have a history with uh, mental health and behavioral health uh, nevertheless spoke with them and they asked me uh, everything not just uh, how things were or have been in recent history, my relationship with my wife and my son, uh, she wanted to know about my adolescence. She wanted to know about my relationship with my parents and my siblings. So got into that a little bit. At the end of it, I pretty much got looked at head to toe, ears, that's my nose, eyes, <laughs> uh, teeth, uh, had a dental exam too at that time, and uh, here in the old noggin. All that stuff got compiled and sent off, and then the waiting began. And it was around uh, mid to late April, around the time of my Air Force anniversary, that I found out the informal board, the IPEB, concluded that I was unfit for duty. And my case was being sent over to the VA to determine the severity of what I was being boarded for. And that would determine whether I would be discharged with severance pay or retired. All that came back, and initially, I was rated at 10%. It was what we kind of feared, that the Air Force would say, I'm too sick to serve, but the VA would say, I'm not really that sick. So they came back with 10% for the Crohn's and an overall 60% with everything else lumped in there. So we lobbied for a reconsideration. Now, when that comes back, you can request a formal hearing, a formal board, and you must I don't think you're necessarily coerced into doing it, but you must get a hold of the uh, Airmen's Defense Council down there. Uh, that's their job is to represent people like me that are being boarded and they lobby on your behalf to either have the Air Force reconsider their decision or ask the VA to reconsider their decision. It would have been a losing battle to ask the Air Force to reconsider. I mean, they had my commander's endorsement. They had my own endorsement. You know, all of us, the doctor, um, well, my PCM at least, saying that with dietary changes and medication, this guy can manage his symptoms. Even with that, they said, no. Nah. So we went to the VA. They did not have a clear picture or a current picture of what I was going through, what was happening in my, uh, my old belly there. By the way, y'all heard about the freshman 15, right? You heard about the COVID-19? Holy shit. I should not have gotten into baking. So anyway, we spoke to my specialist off base, my GI specialist, who had seen much more of me than, than other people, most people have. And... I wrote a letter, my wife wrote a letter, and my specialist wrote a letter to the VA telling them, hey, this guy's uh, symptoms, they're a little worse than, than what you were initially presented. And that's totally fine. That's the point of the VA reconsideration. If there is new evidence to present, well, that's your opportunity to present it. And so that's what we had. Uh, let's be honest, my Crohn's has gotten worse uh, since my initial diagnosis. I wake up 
Every other morning, I wake up with this sort of GI distress. It feels like I'm having a flare. I wake up with it. So maybe they weren't too far off in their decision. Nevertheless, we sent all this to the VA, waited maybe a month, at least three weeks. And in that time, my birthday came and went. My uh, two-year mark as an officer came and went. I promoted in the middle of all of this. And then it happened. The VA had concluded and sent their new findings back, and they amended pretty much everything that I had received initially following the IPEB. They amended my 10% to 30, my overall from 60 to 70, and no longer was I being discharged with severance, but I was being retired as an O2E. 14 years, 5 months, and 21 days, October 15th, 2020, will be my last day. This morning was actually my final out. And because of freaking COVID, out processing has been a, a little weird. And my final out was a very brief phone call. I scanned, compiled, and emailed everything I had to FSS. I was told to do so two days out from my final out. If I was missing anything, to expect a call 24 hours out. And if I didn't get a call or an email, I should assume things are good. And sure enough, I was called around 0900, maybe 0850 this morning. Hey, you're good to go. That was, that was it. I don't know what I was expecting, but it was anticlimactic to say the least. She asked if I had any questions. One question I did have wasn't even for the retirement section. It was for finance. I don't know if I'm going to get paid through DFAS or VA. The VA is tax free. So I'm probably going to go with that, but I don't know. The discharge with severance pay would have been something. It would have been a huge lump sum. I think right, right up front. Well, not up front, like right now. But if I remember what I read, I think that lump sum, along with any leave that you sell, do not sell leave ever. It's a ripoff. Don't sell your leave. Take as much leave as you can. I have 70 Point five days of terminal leave. That's a lot of leave. And you can take up to 20 days of permissive TDY if you're retiring. Uh, if you're being separated, uh, you still take your terminal leave, but chances are your commander isn't going to grant any permissive or anything. He or she might. doesn't hurt to ask. But it's not customary, I guess. Now, you can take up to 20 days, but take all your leave. Your PTDY... You can truncate that, which is what I'm doing. I'm only taking eight, maybe nine days of permissive TDY, but I'm taking 70 days of leave. If you sell your leave, you're only going to get the base pay. You're not going to get your allowances and it's going to be taxed. So you're not even going to get all of your base pay. But if you take your leave, it's just like you're on duty. You get your base pay, you get your allowances and all of it's taxed the same anyway. So take your freaking leave. Even if you're not in my situation, take your leave. If your unit is like crippled and it's gonna be made even worse if you take leave, that's really the one exception. That's like the one scenario where a commander can deny you leave. And even then, I don't even think your unit commander has the grounds to do that. I think it has to go up to like group or wing or something. You have to like coordinate your leave first, but as soon as you like kind of submit it into the system. So if you're a good airman, you coordinate your leave with your supervisor. You make sure you're not hanging your peers out to dry. You make sure you're not putting your supervision in a tight spot. Now, if you coordinate all that and everything's cool, we're assuming that you and your supervisor are talking and everything's cool because your supervisor spoke with their supervisor and everything's cool on their end. Supervisor comes back, gives you the A-OK, -okay, put your leave in, you're good to go. Don't be a douchebag and just put leave in on leave web without any context, without a warning. That's a dirtbag airman move. But if you are in my situation, look at how much leave you have. You can forecast how much leave you will earn because even if you're on terminal leave, you're still on duty. So you are accruing leave. Right now, I think I'm at like 61.5, but there's still July, August, September. And in the AFI, it breaks down where your separation date is in the month. That's how many days of leave that you get. 
So me, I'm on the 15th. I'm between 13 and 18 day of the month. That's 1.5 days. It's not you must do 30 days to get your two days of leave or two and a half days of leave. It's you do a week, you like get a day. You get two weeks, half a month, you get your day and a half, then you get two days and so on and so forth. You get it. There's a lot of stuff out there. I read a lot of um, subsections from the U.S. code regarding how the government identifies a retired service member and how that individual is paid and then discharge with severance. Holy shit. It takes four years. So with retirement, it's the 2.5% thing, right? You get 50% of 20 years because 2.5 times 20 is 50. Right? For me, it's about 36%. You 2.5% times 14 years, five months. I was a week off from getting six months, which would be a bigger deal if I was getting separated. And I'll tell you why. So with retirement factors in years, months. With separation, with medical separation, disability separation, when you're actually going to get a severance pay, it factors in whole years. But if you are at X years, it's six months, six months in a day, it rounds up to the next year. You take that figure, I think you just straight up multiply it. Oh no, you double your base pay and then you multiply it by the number of years you've been in. They don't do fractions. They don't do like 14 and three twelfths, which is one fourth. So for an O2E at 14 years, look it up, double it, and then multiply it by 14. It's a big chunk of change up front. However, you don't get TRICARE. You lose base access. You, uh, this is pretty much it. <laughs> we really, we really want to try care. My wife and I, we've been together 11 and a half years almost. We're going to be together forever. I hope that doesn't come back to bite me. And my son, my son's two. His birthday's tomorrow. He needs coverage. And from what I have heard, from what I understand, health insurance on the outside is Whoa. expensive. With TRICARE Prime, it's 600 a year. It's $50 a month for me, my spouse, and my kid. My kid's covered till he's 21. No matter what happens between me and my wife, if I die in a car crash, if we get divorced, if she remarries, he's covered no matter what. Something happens to me and my wife doesn't remarry and she hits 55 or whatever, then I think she keeps her coverage. If she does remarry, then she loses it. Nuances there that we really didn't explore because we're pretty confident that, you know, we're going to make it. Find somebody like that. I'm not one to give relationship advice. I mean, maybe I am because uh, our marriage is uh, usually the envy of, of others. Oof, starting out, I was not very good with relationships. It would seem that the uh, days of me coming on here and talking about OCPs and Air Force shit, ascending through the commission ranks, uh, looks like those days are over. I did not go to OTS expecting this. My uh, promotion was very, uh, I wouldn't call it somber. I couldn't have made a thing out of it anyway because of COVID. But I used to lay in bed and like imagine having my family come out. Uh, when I first put my butter bars on, my wife, who was seven months pregnant, and my uh, kid brother, 13, they both um, put the, uh, the sleeves on, the uh, epaulets or whatever you want to call them. And I wanted that to be a thing. I was thinking, man, when I promote to captain and, and maybe major, you know, just to compare the pictures of my pregnant wife and my kid brother to my 23-year-old brother and my wife and then my 10, nine-year-old son throwing new rank on, you know, and for first lieutenant, I wanted to bring my family out so I could have that happen. And I never had like my own promotion. When I promoted to staff, it was with two other people in my unit. When I promoted to tech, my uh, commander called me in. My chief was there and they congratulated me. I put on one November 2016 with a little fanfare. just walked in and was wearing it. I mean, you have your tech start and release party, but you have to pay a freaking $25 or $30 landing fee. Woohoo. But this was my first promotion ceremony that would have been for me. And that same week was when I Found out the good news that I was going to be retired and I was going to be retired 15 October. So now here I am staring at civilian life way sooner than I expected. The positives are no more globe trotting. I mean, I was kind of looking forward to maybe going to Colorado after this. 
And for that last assignment, maybe going overseas, I really wanted to take my son to Japan or to Europe, mostly Japan, because I'm a Dragon Ball nerd. You'll see that here in a second. And just show him like, hey, the world's a big place. It's round and it's a big place. I was born in Florida, raised in Ohio, and I, I knew stuff was out there, but I didn't know what was out there until I went out and saw it. My wife watches 90 Day Fiance, and holy sh**, there are some tone-deaf Americans on that show. They freaking go over to places like Jordan, and they're just like, an American, you can't tell me what to do. Huh? And it's like, um, you're an American, but you're not an American anymore. You're at somebody else's house. And guess what? You got to play by their rules, you dumbass. So I wanted to take my kid out, and I wanted to show that to him. I wanted to show him the Tories, the arches out in Japan. I wanted to show him Mount Fuji. My wife also likes Lost in Translation. And it would have been cool to, to see that. Well, now, maybe somewhere down the road, we have enough money, we'll, we'll fly out there for a week or two. But the days of deployments, PCSs, mobility exercises, and gas masks, mop gear, same colored t-shirts and green socks. Those days are done. Thankfully, I'll always be Lieutenant Mitchell. Anyway, to close things out, this is what my, uh, my airmen, my team gave me as my uh, little going away. I wasn't expecting anything. And uh, I guess I am their super blue LT. I did what I could in what little time I had. They got me nothing bunt cake for my birthday. Wasn't expecting that. And then they came out with this. And they all wrote stuff underneath. My time in the uh, operations center, that, that, was, that was good stuff. It sucks. It's bittersweet. It was bound to happen eventually. I gotta find a f job.